Definitely some fighting words there between Afrika and Dynamics, and it is definitely a story of veterans versus newcomers, although there are a lot of uh, certainly namestay names over on uh, Team Dynamics. We're going to go over them right now. Doctor, certainly a very new player, used to be FaZe, as you mentioned, when he debuted. But uh, Guga has been playing for a long time, Kuzan, of course, and Rich, both of them have been playing in esports for a while. Of course, Rich did spend some time on Gen G, but formerly MVP Black for Heroes of the Storm and was an absolute god in that game. And so we'll see whether he can actually go up against Kane. This has been a rough matchup for him in the past, but uh, Kane has been up and down, one could say, but so far on the up with a couple of wins under their belt. Yeah, I think that Kane looked pretty good in their last performance. Uh, obviously, we saw uh, Freaka up against Sandbox. I don't really feel like that's a good test for any team right now in the LCK going up against Sandbox. But it again, it, it's not like it was it was close wins, right? It was a yeah. big time stomp, but we we did see that from Dom one as well. My God. Okay. Uh, can you just calm huh. down, Rich? <laughs> Okay, so he's first in everything. This is our best top laner in the LCK. Weirdly enough, it didn't actually look like he was dominating that hard in their first series. It just looked like D Dynamics had way better drafts in every single... They, they were the ones piloting the disgusting Karma draft that looked yep. impossible to lose yep. with the Callista Tarek on the bottom side of the map. Callista Tarek plus Karma, like... And you, you're playing Aatrox, so you literally can't die. Like... <laughs> It's the closest thing to being a god in League of Legends that you can get to. But Mystic on the other side, he uh, did debut with a pentakill, uh, which is exactly what Gorilla didn't want on the other side yeah. of the rift, and uh, announced it before the game. And then Mystic decided that he'd do it again anyway. He uh, he showed what two 200 years of collective being better than you mm. yeah, can do for you. <laughs> he, had the, he had the better champ, that's for sure. He also won on the Callista. And it's interesting to see a key player from Afrika that's not keen. I feel like every single time we do have Afrika here in the LCK, we always talk about Keen and how good he is going to be. I still think that's the key matchup here. Rich up against Keen up in the top side. Yeah, and actually exactly need, how good Keen is. I need to correct not, myself. Not it was actually Rich. it was it was Afrika that ran the the disgusting. Oh role. well. <laughs> uh, so both of these teams drafting relatively well. It was uh, Dynamics that brought out the Yasuo, the fasting center Yasuo lane, which worked very oh, very yeah. well. And uh, they also had uh, 200 years uh, under the sea uh, in their final match, which was augmented by that karma that made Rich unkillable on his Aatrox. So a very similar school of thought when it came to drafting for both of these squads. And we'll see what's actually going to come out here, because I think that they're going to need to dig a little bit deeper when they're up against each other, because I think that the style in the draft is very similar between these two squads. Yeah, I, I think absolutely that uh, they are guys that are kind of like on the cusp of the meta, right? They're, they're listening to it. They're actually drafting that way. And we saw that notably in their last couple of matches. Uh, in terms of actual skill level coming into this one, it, it's hard to say because I, I don't know if we're going to see Aphelios in these matches. You know, we, we have seen a bunch of Aphelios picked, but when you're going up against Mystic, who just got a pentakill on it, and FaZe, now Duckdom, who was showing already that he's a great Aphelios player. I think maybe you want to let that one go. Yeah. Um, so, or, you know, let it go to the ban list, I should say. But it'll be interesting to see how these two kind of draft around each other with their similar styles. I do really feel like, you know, mid lane for both of these teams very facilitative. But I think there are arguments for focusing bans on the top side and the bottom side in this series. And we'll see whether, you know, the fact that Rich has first in every single possible stat is uh, going to be a reason for <laughs> I mean, Afrika to focus. In two games. Two game sample size <laughs> doesn't matter. I am uh, I am a big fan of just uh, being a slave to the statistics. You saw the ones. Yeah. That was it. You he saw was he first was number one. He is the best. He's the first in every stat that we decided to provide on yeah. the LCK broadcast. <laughs> sure. Okay? He's great. Yeah. Great player, for sure, as we're going to get into the pick ban here. Varus, guys, by the way, that's the 16th time he's banned out of 16 games. Beautiful. So I, I think we should be seeing some Varus um, nerfs here soon. Set, uh, in a very similar fashion, has been banned an incredible amount of these games. TF and Wukong are a couple of um, current meta picks that I think are 
slowly rising in priority. We saw what uh, Wukong, what kind of power Wukong can have. Um, the other day, I, I think it was Rascal who was playing. Someone was playing an amazing uh, Wukong who was just like basically spreading out his clones and everything to knock up everybody. And Doran yesterday was doing a lot of that as well. Uh, Maybe it was Doran. It might yeah. it might have actually been yeah. in that series. Is Corky's going to get banned and Dynamics get a free karma first pick? I, I find this very interesting. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Take it away. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I mean, Kuzan, yeah, he's a great Corky player. There's he is. no denying that, but... Karma is definitely one of these picks that you're not really sure if you want to get. Of course, they do get on the other side Ezreal Yumi, but Aphelios was never banned, and that's something that I was very surprised would make it through. This is a lane that a lot of our Korean AD carries actually like on the Ezreal side. They feel like this is actually something that they're okay with. We haven't necessarily seen that work out uh, in a lot of our games. Um, but we'll see how it's going to work here, as Apelios is indeed locked in. Yeah. It is a very flexible champion, is that Karma, so it could potentially be in the hands of Guga on the bottom side, but with Kuzan on the roster, I hazard a guess that it's going to be him piloting the champion. Uh, he is certainly very notable for a, a small pile of champions. Yeah. It's the Corky, I think he's most played of all time. Karma, definitely up there, and then it's Lissandra and Lucian. And they sort of like... They are the, the champions that encapsulate Kuzan. Yeah. So I have a feeling, with one of them being locked in here, uh, it's probably going to be going to him, as the Trundle will be locked away, and there is the Grave. So we haven't actually committed to Team Rocket just yet for Afrika, but Fly could, of course, go over to his Zoe. Yeah, I, I think that might actually get banned now that you're mentioning it. Um, I, I don't think you want to allow Zoe to come out here. Uh, a champion that is actually quite nice against Aphelios because you just keep your distance, right? You're not really interacting with him in his face. And we're both on the same page here, Max Analyst. Oh, oh, oh. The Zoe is going to be taken away. And also keep in mind that they're giving credit to Guger or even Rich to pull out the Karma here. So they are going to take away the LeBlanc and not allow Kuzan to play that one. Obviously, another Kuzan mainstay. As I think he actually is going to get targeted even more. So they're not believing that this karma is going mid. They also, uh, they could be respecting Rich, who was a fantastic top lane Lucian player as True. well. It's part of the reason why Dynamics was so strong in Challenger last year. Against this team. Like, yeah. Lucian is a great band. <laughs> Just in general, yeah. for sure. We even saw uh, Deft playing the Lucian very, very well yesterday. Yeah. I haven't seen a lot of bot lane Lucian for a really long time. Uh, so that was really cool to see. But probably not going to be happening just yet, and definitely not happening in this game, as he has just been banned. Jace also going to go, uh, certainly one of Keen's favorites, and sort of trying to stop that poke idea um, that a lot of our teams have been having, as here is the Syndra Trap card being locked in. Currently 1 and 2, but 100% pick ban rate so far. We'll see whether it's going to be different here, blind picked into the mid lane. Not a bad matchup for the Karma, to be honest. You're happy just to sit there and farm it out. Yeah, I, I think they're probably just going to let Kuzan pilot that one. Maybe we see a bit of uh, 200 Years Under the Sea. What, is that the name of it? Yep, 200 Years Under the Sea. Yeah, seems very likely with Nautilus available. A great combo with the Felios down in the bottom side. You let the Karma go mid. And now let's see what Rich wants to blind pick. I suppose they could pick a mid into Syndra and then let the Karma go top, but that doesn't seem too likely with the Is players banned? we have. So, yeah, yeah. probably Aatrox. I'd already here written it down. Rich. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> there it is. And now Kane can pick whatever he wants into it. It's not going to be his Jace, but we know that Kane has a hell of a lot of uh, champions that he can pilot. I don't know whether this necessarily fits the theme, but uh, 13 seconds to go. Cannon currently being hovered. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, locked away. The cannon is good into the matchup. We've we've seen it into the Aatrox, but I, I think you are correct in that it's not amazing with this kind of combo. Uh, I, he's probably just going to be going AP and looking to engage and allowing uh, Syndra and Ezreal Yumi. Graves do the damage from the back, but they don't really have much tankiness on their side. Um, and yeah. uh. Aphelios is kind of just going to be in range of everybody. <laughs> you know, everybody's kind of 
they don't have enough range to poke him from a distance. So I kind of like Dynamics's draft here a bit better. I mean, Afrika do have a lot of pick potential uh, throughout the mid game. They do have a lot of laning power, especially with Spirit being able to deny a lot of jungle camps from the Trundle, as is uh, per usual with uh, his speedy jungle clear. But I don't know what a team fight looks like that they're going to win up against Team Dynamics. Very, very standard front to back. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're saying. Very, very standard. They go for picks that really fit the players and also the current meta and that have really good win rates right now. Karma's got a good win rate. The Trundle's got a good win rate. Ridge is great on the Aatrox. 200 years under the sea doesn't really need a mention down there. They have their tanks engage, and then they let their AD carries blow them up. Whereas on the other side, you mentioned a lot of pick potential, certainly a lot of poke as well just in syndra and the ezreal and yumi and then king can kind of get it going with some teleport flanks or just straight on yeah you know frontal engages i mean the idea of this comp is to poke them down and then the cannon flashes into the back line and hopefully kills everyone but whether that's going to work we'll have to find out as we get onto the rift for game number one of our fourth day of lck summer i hope you guys have been enjoying the lck so far we started a little bit later than the other regions, but that's uh, that's because we had a lot of aggression to get out. It's been really bloodthirsty here in the other yeah. uh, For the beginning, I think that MSC did have a big effect, and uh, we heard a lot of the players actually talking about the fact that, you know, they're going to take the more aggressive LPL style. Well, we haven't perfected it yet, because there's, yeah, there's been I mean, some odd decisions made, uh, but I, I like that we're trying to move it in at least a forward-facing direction, you know? It's uh, it's a slow-moving train. That's uh, what the LCK has always been, I suppose, in terms of meta shifts. But certainly they have adopted the new style of meta over here, and it has been quite nice. I, th I think Afrika have a little bit more room to get more aggressive in their comp, whereas I think Team Dynamics can kind of sit back and let 200 years do his thing. Yep. They can also soak aggression very well uh, with a composition like this. A lot of inbuilt sustain into the entire top side of the map, and then uh, Dr. will have that late game insurance policy. But we'll just see whether the Nautilus of Felios is going to be okay in this lane, because Ezreal Yumi is certainly going to be able to effectively poke out a melee support in this matchup. But you don't pick this for lane, right? You pick the Aphelios Nautilus just to have a lot more utility as the game goes on, a little bit more insurance. So see how uh, Dr. is going to do down here alongside Guga. That was, uh, I've seen hitboxes on the dredge yeah. line hit in moments like that before. So I almost think the Google was robbed there based on the expectation for a dredge line. Yeah. They're, they're very skinny champions on the other side. That count on yeah. the book is not very big. One thing I noticed in the rooms is that we had a lot of sorcery tree, but no scorch. Yeah, there was a lot of storms not, not gathering. Not a single person. And we had like five or six people with that one. And level two is going to be hit here. Yep. Hitbox absolutely in. And then the exhaust onto Ben. Mystic offering a lot of damage back, but it's a good trade here for Dynamics. Interesting when you talk about trading at this situation. Yes, there's Severum, so there is going to be some lifesteal. But if you're going sustain versus not as much sustain, those sort of trades are always going to favor the sustain bot lane. Yeah. So you can see Mystic already back to full health. You know what's interesting is this is a jungle path that LS was talking about a lot yesterday. Graves is that, and Graves and Jarvan that go from red to blue and then clear their blue side jungle as a nice amount of trade down here. But Beyond actually read into that and said, okay, I can get in there and steal some of the Raptors and I can steal some of the Grubs. So he's saying, I know exactly what kind of jungle path you're going to take on this Graves. He's able to come in here and steal away a lot of value. And now he's even in position. It doesn't seem like they knew he was here at all. Yep, in he comes, sir. There's the flash forward holding onto the pillar. But after the flash, he is going to get it down there. Very nicely done. Stun comes in, but thankfully for Beyond, he is outside of the turret range. Keen had no other options, right? That was exactly how he had to play that one out. But it was brilliant that uh, Beyond read that situation. Yeah, and it really just all came from the jungle pathing. I mean, I think Spirit could have communicated the fact that his Raptors are gone and maybe he could go top, but I'm not sure that they would have expected that. Now Beyond is going to get in there. 
take away the scuttle. We do see the Graves going in and trying to steal away some of the camps that he lost on the other side. Camps that, by the way, Graves loves with his farming style and yeah. ability to AoE. And we'll be able to transition very easily into the bottom side. Rift Scuttler, so still farming very well, but Beyond also doing the same thing. It's actually really interesting, Beyond versus Spirit, two uh, players that have been playing in the LCK alongside one another for a really long time. Of course, Beyond formerly uh, on MVP, and we've spoken about this matchup, I swear, for like four years. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's really cool to have that one back again. Fly versus Kuzan, another matchup uh, through the ages. Um, certainly, former teammates, Kuzan playing on Gen.G, but uh, before that, it was uh, Fly versus Kuzan in more of a uh, Kuzan on the Jin Air side of things. But I just, very cool. Yeah. Did you see the call was picked up here from Keen up against the melee matchup of the Aatrox? He's actually going to get ahead after this wave. The gank does help. We'll see if they'll go for a follow-up gank, but it's not the easiest person to gank, or the, the champion, I suppose I should say, in the cannon. And outside of that, everything is just going very, you know, standard, slow. We're all just farming it out, and that, that feels really nice for the side of Team Dynamics. I, I think that in the late game, they're going to have a pretty nice advantage with this Abelios and the amount of, you know, support that they do have for this champion. And a lot of the weight in this composition is definitely on to Duck Dom, but he's proven that even though he's a young player, that he can actually handle that pressure and, and carry pretty well from the ADC position. He has so much peel though this game that I don't feel like there's that much pressure because all he has to really do is have the right weapons and attack move into <laughs> the enemy. Because there's what, Pillar, there's the suite of CC that Nautilus offers, yeah. and there's Kuzan bringing him back to full health all the time with his Athenes and Holy Grail plus Inspire Shield combo. Yeah. Trust me, though, you can still mess it up. <laughs> you, I mean, uh, yeah, that's true. But we also hybrid the other day going oh, after that yeah. inhibitor. <laughs> I just cringe every time I think about that, actually, nowadays. Thanks for reminding all of yeah. us. <laughs> Doesn't matter how far ahead you are, <laughs> what kind of composition you have, if you're going to go in melee range, it's not going to go very well for you. It's like, as LS would say, though, you know, if you've got hands, you can probably make something happen. Uh, and I think that uh, Doc Dumb has certainly proven that he does does have two hands. Yeah. And he's also here. I can turn around. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, he's using both of them right now. I that, can that's confirm. good news. Can confirm. No uh, mouse only players here in the LCK, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> God, that would be so hard. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, you were talking about the drafts a little bit before we came into the game and how these two teams specifically are great at the drafting. It, it does feel like they've done a really nice job of crafting, like the perfect comp for Duck Dom to basically not have to worry. Yeah. And that's why it feels like everything goes smoothly and nothing goes crazy. You know, if Keen doesn't pop off, if, you know, Afrika just kind of sit back, I think that team dynamics should be pretty happy when it comes to the later stages of the game. But on the other side of the coin, Afrika do have a fantastic mid-game composition, right? So even though they're not doing a whole lot right now, this is not where they're strong. They're going to be strong at two items with basically everyone. Uh, especially, you know, Syndra. She's going to get her Ludens into something like just an Oblivion Orb, and she'll be very strong in the mid-game. And uh, Kennen always pretty good on two items. And Ezreal needs no introduction there, right? Even though he's more of a three-item AD carry now that... Uh, Good old Death's Dance exists, but still the two items are very strong. So Afrika will be able to get a lot of control around that mid game. So far, Team Dynamics have taken the first dragon as Rich finds Spirit blind with that Q combo. Beyond's going to turn up though as Keen tries to dive forward, but he has no flash and the pillar is too good. They're able to lock him down. It's one for one so far. And now Rich looking to try and lock down Spirit. Double buffs on the Graves. The world end is there, and Honey Fruit will make Rich a little bit more powerful. But meanwhile, on the bottom side, Dynamics are just obliterating this lane. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how it's going this one-sided. We haven't had the camera down on the bottom side the whole time. There was that really good trade at level 2, and I think that kind of set Mystic and Ben back a bit because they lost two summoners compared to one, but they should have been able to stabilize. And ever since then, Duck Dom and Guger have just been hard pushing. They used that priority to get the first Drake. The Mountain, by the way, which is quite 
really nice, by the way, not even just white, for their composition. And then after that, Mystic and Ben kind of just like left the turret, maybe assuming that Beyond would be there, but he was actually top, responding to a gank. So I feel like there's a little bit of a, a jungle, you know, some question marks about where the enemy jungler has been. Yeah, that might beyond. be. Yeah, that might be what's happened uh, to the bottom lane, but I actually don't think that this lane should ever go like this. Very odd. But Mystic does have his teleport available. Unfortunately, he can't taxi on that one anymore, but Ben should be able to get back to this lane relatively effectively, as Beyond is the one to take down the Rift Herald. Let's have a look at this once again. Rich just... There was a ward there that died. Aha, uh -huh, that's probably what it was. And you can see that the subjugate goes off, which makes it much harder to kill Beyond. And then there was the the chomp, and then that extra auto and Q combo from the Aatrox that just blew up that cannon, which did eventually make it a one for one. So the cannon ult was nice, but it also did, you know, feed over a kill to the side of Team Dynamics. I think that kill going early to the Graves, though, is a bit better compared to the Trundle. Trundle's going to get tanky, and he's kind of just going to sit there, but Graves can always use a little bit of scaling. Yep, I would have liked that kill under Rich, absolutely. But a kill's a kill. And you can see as far as the money is concerned, Keen only 400 in the lead. That will extend as the call is cashed in. Now Guga, thinking about trying to find himself an engage opportunity, but Spirit, right place, right time, will deny any aggression. But, I mean, Dokkan's already pretty strong. I mean, look at the item comparison as far as battle stats. That's a BF sword in the lead. And that uh, tier is absolutely doing nothing right now. Oh, Max Wayne, yeah. stretch line is fantastic. <laughs> Exhaust goes down. Final chapter's in. This is 3v2, by the way. Um, is this pre-nerf of Felios? Like, what's happening down here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, they're just getting hooked time after time. And Mystic had to flash away from that one just to survive. And he nearly died after the flash. So you could see that it doesn't seem like the two of them are very confident in this kind of... 2v2 situation. Uh, World Ender. Slicing Maelstrom in there as well, but uh, Rich finding himself the uh, Infernal Chain is good, but that was opting in for a trade that didn't necessarily work the best. Spirit and Beyond are going to find each other. Subjugate still available, so Beyond not under any threat of dying at this stage. Oh my god, I figured it out. I understand why Afrika picked this comp. There's no oh, yeah. good Subjugate target. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Great. <laughs> Nailed it. Awesome. That's, that's really what I like to see. I mean, yeah, I, I suppose so. But I mean, unless, you know, Spirit stacks up all of his uh, all of his defensive passive and stuff like that, and then he gets subjugated. Yeah. It's a bit of value. There you go. I mean, they, they chose the Graves into the Trundle. Pretty common. And now they're going to try to force this dragon here, but Hyrax oh, is in yeah. position. Dean, he's also teleporting in, but now the fight has already started. Slicing Maelstrom halfway through that oh. cooldown, and that means the dynamics steal away the Infernal Drake, and Spirit limps out of the fight with his life, but without the Drake. And uh, this is dynamics with two dragons and a better scaling comp. That dragon was just so forced out of a Afrika when they're not winning this game. They just decided, you know, we're behind, but we can try to force this. Maybe the cannon can TP. There were no good TP wards. He had to TP in kind of behind them or with them. What does he do after a TP? He has no ulti. Like, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, really, I would have walked top with it, it felt line. very forced. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have minded him taking a couple of plates and giving up the infernal. Yeah. Just based on the way that the, the, the fight broke out. I mean you can't force it from there. And Team Dynamics were perfectly set up. Rich was already there. This is what I love about Team Dynamics is that they just seem really clean as a team. Like their communication is spot on. They seem to always be in the right spot at the right time. Their drafts are really clean as well. You know, if the players get better and better, this team has really a lot of potential to show. Yeah, absolutely. They just seem really hungry. And I think that that's just fantastic. Especially given the fact that sometimes you can have teams like this that really start to flounder with uh, nerves and things like that. But they've got Rich, they've got Kuzan, they've got Guga, they, and beyond. Like, four of these players have massive amounts of LCK experience, yeah. but they had to deal with falling back into Challenger, not necessarily finding that top tier team. So the understanding of what they've been given in this opportunity is really high. And I think that that's really, really cool to see 
uh, just what that has done for this team. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a very exciting team. I'm really glad that they're in the LCK, uh, for sure. And they're showing it here once again in game number one against Afrika. I mean, you, we didn't talk too much about the mid lane, but Karma against Syndra is just so fun. It's like, such a wash. It's such an easy item build for you to just go Athenes, Mercs, and Syndra is never doing anything to you. He also has Unsealed's Pelvic, by the way, so he can get Barrier, uh, Exhaust, <laughs> yeah. anything really. He's never dying, ever. And he's going to get awesome farm. And the fact that he's doing a great job and also their bot lane won really hard because of just straight up 2v2 play that, that was unaffected. Is insane. It was unaffected by the jungle as well. I mean, that's massive. That's 2v2. That's just being better in a 2v2. And I think everyone knows just how busted Yumi is. Paired with Ezreal, it's also very, very frightening. Like, yeah. that is not how this matchup should go, by the way, guys. It's just... I guess they got outplayed. Guga certainly hit a lot of fantastic hooks during that lane, but the feeling of that even that shouldn't have been that bad is now we're going for a four-man siege here on the mid lane and Mystic and a cat, not sure what they're gonna be able to do there. As uh Yeah, they're just gonna lose this out of turret. Not enough wave clear, and Afrika look lost. Yeah. They they are definitely not on the same level as team dynamics in terms of their macro play right now. Team Dynamics are always one step ahead of the play, doing the right thing. Bringing down their top laner for the Infernal Flight. They're grouping up for the, the take of the mid-tier turret before even Shirley was taken. And Afrika's like, oh, I don't know, I'm kind of just going to sit off by myself and farm and let this go down. And I, I feel like the Cinder of this game is going to be behind for the majority of it. She's only really got one good target in the Aphelios, which will be good eventually. But, you know, you were talking about that mid-game comp. That still does stamps, but how far behind can they afford to get here? Not too much further, yeah. uh, to say the least. I actually feel, even with the fact that Dynamics now having two dragons, a lot of the time a mid-game comp is powerful because you can stack those drakes and you can abuse the power of a dragon soul on top of all of those extra stats because your composition is just better early. Afrika have absolutely not done that. I mean, they're one kill away from being perfect gamed uh, against the better scaling comp. So you can imagine that even mentally right now, it's a real rough situation uh, for Afrika. Because I'm sure they're well aware that things are not necessarily just going to naturally get better. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Yeah. Thankfully for them, it is just the Cloud Soul. But Cloud Soul, I, I feel like it's not so bad for their team. I feel like there's a lot of very nice ults on their side. And they would love to be in position more so than any, anything else. The ults, most of them seem a little bit too long to, you know, spam a couple in a fight. Rich might get caught out here. Let's see how he reads that positioning. That was a little bit suspicious. And immediately he's like, no, nah, I'm out of here. Sorry. Yeah, Rich's spidey senses are like really good, by the way. Yeah. I mean, you don't become the faker of hots by <laughs> That's not having some kind of like six gaming sense, right? And Rich is beginning to show that more and more. And look at this. The rest of Team Dynamics read the situation as well. They uh, put Shirley towards the bottom side of the map. She's going to headbutt her way to victory. Keen should be able to take her down before she... Oh, no. Uh. That is a disaster, actually. <laughs> now there is a clear inroad for Dynamics towards the bottom side. Doctum in the mid lane with the Severum Calibrum. That's uh, not the Calibrum. It's the Crescendum. Mm. Too many C guns. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, like... This is the best if you're like in a fight short range, and then if you actually just add Calibrum instead of Severum, then that's the best if you're gonna do the long range stuff. So I guess they're the ones that we talk about a lot of the time. Yeah, Gravenum is is yeah, that's insane the, for like the Ash Bar uh, Assault. Yeah, yeah it's ability. like in the early to mid game, you can just <laughs> root two members or three members. We saw them try to dive in Aphelios yesterday, and they, it was just hilarious. Yeah, that was when Death stunned three people yeah. or something like that. And he got away, and then they gave up three kills just like that. I think they still lost that game. They did lose that game. Somehow. There we go. Stockdam is uh, rolling pretty well as far as the guns are concerned. Currently uh, ready to get some fights happening. But look at the vision control. This is beautiful from Dynamics. Look at that. Like This is like... 
what I would say was like old quintessential T1 vision, which is where you push up your control ward line over time as you put on pressure to your opponents. Still happening. Flash out from Dr. Wow. though is uh, respecting Keen a lot. Spirit takes a lot of damage though as Graviton will stun him up, but not quite enough to do too much. And uh, Kuzan's just going to wail on a turret top lane and Beyond is going to spot for him. So yeah, it's just, this is dynamics being in better positions on the map throughout this whole what? game. As, uh, how did that happen? Did he did he steal it with the pillar? Or did Duck Tom get that one? He did. No, Duck Tom got the one in the bottom. Oh, did he? Did <laughs> Was that the one damage Did he pillar? actually steal with the pillar? We're going to have to see a replay of that, Riot. Uh, can you... Uh, yeah, please. <laughs> Jonah Strong. If you get that uh, back on. It must have been. It does do one damage, and, you know... Buffs like that have a habit of sitting on one damage for a little while to avoid, you know, them being unfortunately stolen and things like that. Yeah. But uh, that was the opposite of avoiding it. Interesting. Um, oh my god, Guger has hit like every single one of these red lines. Yeah, he's pretty good. On that Nautilus, we have learned here. And the more that this game just slinks by in the mid game in this bit of a lull state, and Afrika just, you know, leak dragons and, and extra gold and experience on the map dynamics might just you know sail on with the very smooth wins onto the first win here um, in game number one yeah sorry valdanalist looking down at the items Arden yes. sensor is completed runan's hurricane is done uh we've got them having a gigantic amount of crit rate I don't know what a freak is going to be able to do. I mean, Mystic did get a bit of damage there. He does have his transformation. So he is a champion now. But I just don't know whether it is in time to actually save this game. As a minute and a half on that Cloud Drake. Dynamics with no real need to do anything right now. They're going to wait for that opportunity to engage. Keep tabs on Keen. Should be okay. King's Tribute helping beyond out there. Yeah, and we've entered a little bit of a K-Ram here. Uh, by the way, your turret's dying. And, and this is all just <laughs> Dynamics being better at the macro play around the map, right? Yeah. Because they understand that they can feel free to sit in the mid lane because you've got a lane that's equalized, actually pushing on the top side in their favor, and the bottom lane was getting free inhibitor turret damage. Uh, which is just nuts. Now they're able to press into the enemy jungle, get all of the vision that they want to. Like, this is super textbook League of Legends, but it's being played out so well by Dynamics. And now they just move over to the Baron. It immediately gets spotted, but it's no harm, no foul, right? Like, they may as well go for that play. Now move over to the Cloud Drake because it's up in another yeah. 30 seconds. That's something that a lot of LCK teams don't really do is just run at the Baron. We saw an MSC that LP... L L LPL, there I finally got it out. I've had a little bit of trauma about that region. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> they they are never scared to just run at the Baron if they have damage. They're like, hey, what are you going to do about it? You know, we're so T1 far ahead of you. was winning as well, because they were doing a lot of these, like, let's just see what happens if we go for the Baron. I mean, unfortunately, at MSC, it bit them, because uh, they didn't quite make the decisions correctly as Mystic diving forward. Mystic is so desperately trying to get damage that I think it's going to eventually oh my God. Picks Keen out from the back line is now beyond diving forward. Keen does get a decent ulti as the final chapter is brilliant. Doctime's going to go down though, and Keen somehow survives. Rich right in amongst it, but they're missing all of that extra damage. And now Dynamic's not going to be able to find this next Drake. It's not the end of the world. One Cloud Drake going over to a Freaker is no worries, but they would have loved a soul at 22 minutes. That was actually a great play by Keen to flash immediately on the Aphelios. I'm not sure why Duckdown was so far down the lane, just ready to get picked. You were talking about the pick potential on Afrika's comp. It's like, you get out of position, they still have a couple of items, and you're not super tanky. But look at him, he's going 1v1 up against the minion wave up in the top side. Desperately tries to get into the fight, and he just gets stunned for the duration, gets ulted in the face, he gets stunned by the, the cannon, and then immediately they lose all their damage on the side of Team Dynamics. That's, uh, again, this is what I was talking about. Aphelios needs to be available for these fights and doing damage. Otherwise, this comp is not going to work out. And you can see that Keen, he was ready for the fight. Even switches <laughs> over to Ignite uh. just before he gets engaged on. And uh, <laughs> manages to light the Aphelios on fire. So, 
that is how uh, a team fight looks if a Freaker wins, right? But I, the reason why we're talking about Dynamics having a much easier comp to play is that Dr. M should be protected and shouldn't necessarily be halfway to the enemy Nexus while the rest of his team is underneath their outer turret. Yeah, uh, you talked about front to back composition. They have a great one, but if it's really spread out like that and the pieces are all over the place, like a jigsaw puzzle gone wrong, it's going to lose to Afrika's comp, even when they're behind. Because one pick onto Aphelios, they have so much damage in their comp, they can win it. <laughs> Up against what Team Dynamics have, as that time it looks like Spirit. I think Spirit got it that time. Was able to get the red. Sniper, by the way. Yep, Crescendo, by the way. Yeah. He's huh. got the poke of Varus as well in his, in his kit. Thankfully, there were some zoomies available, so uh, Spirit is put back to full health. Another three minutes, and that next Cloud Drake will be available. A lot of uh, soul opportunities here for Dynamics as Guga is uh, playing Bodyguard for this Baron. It's down to half health. It's taking a lot of damage very quickly as the Freaker do move on forward. Spirit is going to be in position to a, for a potential 50 50. Is now Rich looking for a flank. Keen going to be here as well. No flash, but does have Slicing Maelstrom. As my god, the amount of damage there in AoE coming out from Dynamics. I think that was all Kuzan's damage. Yep. And he's uh, a utility, you. by the way. <laughs> he just recently picked up his third item, the Ludens. Um, it's one of the amazing things about Karma is he is taking a lot of damage here. Yep. Pillar actually fantastic at making sure that the Infernal Chains arm. And they've zoned them out here. They're going to be able to get in here and take down the mid tier two. I think without a hitch, although that smoke screen very nice. He's going to put a stop to that. Yep. Keen also denied a flank there as Rich moves on into the jungle. But still, not actually able to get too much done here. Another two minutes, and then Afrika are going to have to dance around this dragon yet again. Pressure certainly still on this Afrika squad. Yeah. They, they need to get something done now. I, I think... Trying to go for a good fight around the Cloud Soul is not a bad idea. Um, even though the Cloud Soul isn't amazing, you don't necessarily want to give it for free. I, I think they'll have a better chance before the Cloud Soul gets thrown over to the side of Team Dynamics. So try to get some vision down, try to get some wards, and maybe go for a cannon flank where you can find the Aphelios in the back line. Notice Keen has exhaust. So. Uh, yeah, he could definitely, if he gets in position with the teleport, he could just get right on top of the Aphelios, exhaust him, and reduce all of that damage. Also potentially uh, make Rich a little bit less of a nuisance as well and allow the rest of his team to focus a little bit more on locking down Doctor if he can. Uh, I'm looking at his items though, and I think that Kane really need like the reason why he's just inside lanes for this entire period of time is he needs Void Star to really maximize his damage in the next team fight. Yes, you look down the line and you're like, there's not a lot of magic resist necessarily being intentionally built up, but there's Merc Treads there, there's a Hex Drinker now on Doc Dumb. There's enough. Oh yeah. Know, there's enough to make that Void Staff very crucial, as you were mentioning. The Hex Drinker, I think it's a great choice by the Aphelios. I think he has enough damage against the relatively squishy members of Afrika, but you're just trying not to get burst down by Syndra Kennen like you did in that last fight. If you can if you can solve that and then life steal your way up to 100 in a couple of autos like Aphelios does, <laughs> then <laughs> you're, you're going to be fine. You're going to be winning the team fights. Well, Rich is going to find himself in control ward as Cloud Drake will be up in another 15 seconds. Another dredge line is fantastic as the orc exhaust goes down onto Mystic. Rich finds the back line of that exhaust we were talking about is used on him as he then goes for the escape. And this is what the Dynamics comp wants to do because their AoE healing is quite large with Inspire uh, augmented by uh, the Athenes on Holy Grail. And Afrika, they're the poke comp, but they're getting poked. As Rich just decides that he wants to solo himself a uh, Dragon Soul. Yeah, it's like the slow pushback, you know, the front line of the battle is slowly being pushed back, but it's, it's done enough. It's already done its job, and now it can retreat. They pick up the Cloud Soul, and the poking of Afrika was not enough. It, it stopped Duck Dom from getting right into the middle of the fight because Syndra, actually, Fly was doing a great job of zoning him out with multiple orbs and always threatening that stun ult combo and having Keen, you know, flash and immediately get on top of him. But as you mentioned, I mean, Team Dynamics still won the fight because they they got the objective they were looking for in that one. And now with Cloud Drake, Cloud Soul, rather, they can... Uh, 
can move on to the Baron fights and future fights even stronger. And faster. Yes. As well. Much <laughs> faster. <laughs> but, uh, Cloud Soul is no joke, movement speed, great stat. Um, it's not it's not the strongest of Dragon Souls, of course. In fact, it would be uh, pretty comfortably the weakest, but still very good. As that Void Star, just too little too late, unfortunately, for Keen as he just goes back and purchases it now. Yeah. Well, Atlas, I feel like we're back in tip-top LCK shape. <laughs> One kill every 10 minutes. Oh, we're about to cross that marker in 30 seconds. It's such a beautiful sight to see. We finally, we've shaken off the, uh, the LPL from MSC. <laughs> we've done enough fighting now. These teams have signed a gentleman's agreement to sit back and do nothing. <laughs> and as we mentioned before, this is great for team dynamics. I mean, the pick potential, it's good, but eventually Duck Dom, he's got the, you know, he's building up the items to eventually stop this. And you can see the Baron is getting lower and lower. I think they're just going to get it here. The Graves yeah. not there on time. Yep, all too easy as in goes Rich from the backside as well. Nothing Keen can do as Mystic Arcane shifting backwards. He's going to keep himself alive as they do take down Rich. But the Baron has been taken, and now there is uh, 200 years of damage worth bearing down on them. One of the first red lines I've seen miss, actually, and that's going to get Guga's flash out as well. As somehow this outer turret top lane is still up, and Dynamics can head underneath it. I'm so fast. I know, it's <laughs> silly. Him run away from them, and it's like, oh, actually, we can't catch that guy. You press Moonlight Vigilant and just sprint. Yeah. He looks like Jin after a fourth <laughs> floor. True. <laughs> Very true. As we're going to we're gonna take a look at this quote-unquote fight, as uh, we did have a couple of deaths at least. It was actually closer than you would have imagined. King got in there first, though, and Guzan took the brunt of the damage. The only thing here is that Duck Dom isn't really getting effective autos off. And you can see he misses a lot of his skill shots, gets stunned here. So they were thinking, okay, maybe we can take a fight after we get the Baron. But it doesn't really work out. And because of the shields, the Cloud Soul, the Aphelios, he's just able to sprint away from them. Like, uh, he's just laughing at them, waving goodbye. And they get the Baron. It's great. I think Aphelios should probably go Death's Dance next. And he's eventually just become... He's going to become a monster in these later game fights that I don't think a freak is going to be able to handle. It's going to be very difficult to take him down, absolutely. More of Malmordius is almost completed. Unless he turns that Cold Fields Warhammer into that Death Stance like you were talking about, may as well sit on just a Hex Drinker, to be honest, unless he's going to go for full slot efficiency. Does depend on how much money he has when he goes back next. The Morello's effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we've got Kuzan building towards his Rabidon's Death Cap. After that, it's just going to be disgusting. Uh, the amount of healing and shields that's going to come out of this guy. I talk about healing not because there's really all that much in his kit, apart from uh, personal healing with uh, Mantra W, but uh, with Athenes, certainly does help out. Not to mention the uh, added health back you do get from the Arc So, I don't know, man. This is looking very, very scary for Afrika. And I think that uh, Karma is just really, really strong as a champion. Yeah. It does make a lot of these siege moments very, very impressive. Kuzan's currently on the top side. Dynamics are just trying to utilize this Baron in multiple lanes, break down this turret. Beyond's pillars have also been really good this game. Uh, but you can see Guga taking a lot of damage here as Kane looking for an opportunity. True Shop Barrage does do a lot of work. And Freaker have pushed them away for now. Team Dynamics do a great job of, of knowing when exactly they can fight and when they cannot. They know that Duck Dom's heal flash is down, and so is Karma's. I mean, they, they've lost a lot of summoners from the last fight. Meanwhile, on the side of Afrika, they have pretty much everything here, except the cannon flash. You have to swap that over to the ghost. They say, okay, we have Baron, but we can't really break the base if Afrika play it well, because if we, if we you know, make one mistake, if we move forward a little bit too much, then we're probably just going to lose a big team fight, and that's not worth it. So even though the Baron push looks kind of weak, I think it was the right play for Team Dynamics in that moment. You don't want to give Afrika a massive influx of gold right before this Elder Dragon fight, which is going to be the main objective coming up here in 30 seconds. 
Yeah, certainly going to be uh, a better opportunity to fight for Dynamics, of course, unless Beyond falls down. Fly is going to find a stun. Unleashed Power comes in, but yeah, that's uh, barely did any damage there at all out of the Syndra, unfortunately for him. Beyond still has his ulti available, actually. And uh, now going to be going back up to full health with his Warmogs. Now Doctor on frontlining here gets a cheeky auto attack there onto Keen. Just looking for his opportunity. Flash has now been put back on. And Afrika have one more fight in them. And it's all about Keen and what he can do to lock up the back line. While the rest of Afrika focus down their targets. And Dynamics actually utilize Doctor here as another dredge line comes in. Moonlight Vigil out as well as there's the final chapter beyond. Very, very low, but Guga, he's very tanky. And now Rich does find Keen, stops him from getting into that back line. As Afrika look like they're not ready to fight right now, they're just trying to bide their time for the best opportunity. That was a lot used to not get much. You know, you're basically hitting tanks. Beyond has war mobs. He's fine to take that huge damage. Oh, Keen in trouble though, does go golden. Now Mystic gets caught up with another one. Moonlight Vigil comes out as all of the ultimate cooldown <laughs> reduction is just insane. Calibrum, yep, everything's just super balanced here over on the uh, Aphelio side of things, but this Elder Dragon is going to make things a whole lot worse. It's going to be reset to a little bit, and yeah, Spirit is just going to get game kept by Ridge. World Ender up once again. Uh, Mystic's trying to hit him where he can. Exhaust goes down as now they're trying to pull this one out of the pit. Looks like Dynamics aren't really interested in coin flipping this one. They are so safe, man. But look at the base! Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile. Yeah, Dynamics just had way too much control. Spirit had to actually flash back out. His quick draw not available. That is a free Elder Drake and an inside track towards all of these open inhibitors. And Nexus and uh, inhibitor turrets. Yeah. Duck Dom, it didn't look like he did much in that fight, but that's only because Yumi is doing a disgusting amount of healing. He did over 6,000 damage <laughs> yeah. in that last one and single-handedly zoned four members of Afrika in that fight. He is, he's picked up the death stance. He's basically full builds now. And I think the timer is up here for Afrika. I'm really not sure what they can do, especially up against Elder and now Baron. <laughs> that is going to be coming in here pretty free for Team Dynamics. We talked about this yesterday, how Cinder's not great into a lot of tanks. Well, she's really not great into a lot of tanks plus Karma. I feel like Fly has been doing a really great job at trying to facilitate picks for his team's pick comp. But eventually, the Cinder is falling off. It's falling off hard. He's desperately trying to get a... Uh, de a yeah, Death Cap. Death Cap. I, 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 was, I keep thinking about Death Stance. It's such a great <laughs> item. And he didn't. He, he wasn't even able to pick up the Void Staff either because he went Morello's, and there's now a huge amount of MR on the side of Team Dynamics, so it feels like the Syndra's really doing nothing at this point in time. Ooh, Dredge Line barely missing on the Mystic there as this inhibitor goes down for free. Top one has respawned, and that one probably likely to go down pretty soon too as it looks like Dynamics going to play this one by the book. Currently ahead, 11,000 gold. And Afrika only have a Cloud Drake as far as objectives to talk about. Shelly and Shirley both went to Dynamics. They now have the Cloud Soul. They have two Barons. They had an Elder Drake, which uh, still is active for another 30 seconds. This is most definitely going to be the end of the game here. Afrika's comp never really got off the ground, especially not when it needed to. As look at how quickly these Nexus turrets fall down. Spirit getting zoned out by Rich. On his famous Aatrox. And uh, these Nexus turrets, they, don't, they just don't stand a chance. Beyond, down to about half oh. health here as Rich is trying to do what he can. Fly gets flashed on by the Aatrox. Oh my god, just walks away. Cool guys, don't look at explosions. Oh. And speaking of explosions, the Nexus is dead. Team Dynamics continue their onslaught in the LCK. Team Dynamics looking really clean here in game number one. Kind of reminded me of the old, you know, Samsung Galaxy T1 style of play where it's the games have these massive lull states and you're like, what are they doing? But it's all carefully crafted and they eventually get there with that scaling composition. And it looks really, really good as 
I have to, oh yeah, I have to vote for player of the game. Yeah, you're Max, a pub boy talk. now. Yeah, uh, you have to do some thinking about who you think deserves that one. I think uh, a lot of players played really well, really well, so I don't envy your position, but uh, I just had a sneak peek and I agree. I think yeah. it was definitely uh, fantastic, this game. The fact that the bottom lane was able to win so hard. Uh, Ezra or Yumi, I think everyone has seen the disgusting things that that combo can uh, do. But it's totally neutralized they got, in that game. No, they got smashed. It wasn't neutralized. They lost incredibly hard. It was four turret plates in just 2v2. When it's melee versus double range, like, I don't know, man. And there was really no jungle influence at all into the bottom lane. I mean, I think that Trundle showed up there once, uh, and he was on vision, so that might have scared them a little bit. But outside of that, it was a very clean 2v2 that just straight up went in the direction of Team Dynamics there. So an underrated bot duo for sure in Duckdom and Googer. But at the same time, you have to remember that Afrika did give them uh, a Pelios Nautilus. Yeah. And they didn't ban the Nautilus. Nautilus was picked in the second stage. This was all kind of just given to Team Dynamics and they were allowed to craft this beautiful front to back late game composition and they played it perfectly. So I feel like Props should be given to Team Dynamics, but I, I want to see a better draft from Afrika as well. I want to see Karma bans because both of these teams play fantastically well with Karma, and the fact that the Corky got banned instead of the Karma is just ridiculous. Karma offers so much more. I feel like you can deal with a Corky, but dealing with a Karma is so much harder. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, Afrika threw a gauntlet. And unfortunately, it uh, came back around and hit him in the face. It might have been an accidental boomerang. Yeah. It's not great. Not good to see. But yeah. still, it's a best of three. So it is. can find their way back into this one. Dynamics, though, just looking better as a team after game number one. And so we'll see whether Afrika do have the answer for it. I don't think it was all down to composition. I think a lot of it came down to being better prepared and being a little bit more disciplined with how the macro did play out. Yeah, the macro was great from Team Dynamics uh, as a whole. I think they were just much more focused from Afrika in this game. And then, of course, the bot difference was pretty large. So there are a lot of things for Afrika to shore up, and they do have a chance to come back here in game number two. You and I were talking about this before. We were expecting Team Dynamics to win this one, but yeah. I was expecting it to be a little bit closer than that game number one showed us. So I'm hoping that Afrika can come back. Yeah, and I'm hoping to see some different bot lane matchups as well. Uh, hopefully Mystic can find himself some more comfort, maybe another pentakill. But that'll have to be after a short break, guys. We'll see you for game number two in just a bit.
렉서스 시동가 렉서스 시동가 이거 얘네 다 잡자 그냥 다 잡자 여기 다 잡자 미안해 나 플래시 잘못 써서 